Hello community groups. Uh, the passage that we're going to be looking at today is actually two chapters from the book of 2 Corinthians in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. And I encourage you guys to go and read that as a group together sometime. But I'm just going to give you a couple excerpts from chapter 8 and from chapter 9. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 through 5 it says this, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11, it says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous in on every occasion and through us your generosity re will result in thanksgiving to God. In 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9, Paul is laying out a theology of giving. I encourage you to read it together as a community group and talk about the different implications it has for your life. In the sermon this week, I shared seven principles that we need to keep in balance or tension when we approach the practice of generosity. Principle number one was that we should model Jesus' generosity. What that means is that since God didn't just give us 10% of His life, but gave us 100% of His life, we should orient our entire lives around doing the same. Principle number two was that God gives us all things to enjoy. Life should be a celebration of God's goodness. That means we should enjoy good food, good drink, and good company. We should feast together on earth in anticipation of the great feast that we will all share together in heaven. Principle number three was that God gives us excess to share with others. God doesn't want us to hoard what He has given us because just like the Israelites with the manna, what is hoarded goes bad. God wants us to give what we have to those in need, trusting that He will provide more for us tomorrow. Principle number four was that it is wise to build wealth. Albert Einstein once was asked, what is the greatest force in the world? And his answer was compound interest. God shows us through Scripture that it is good to save and invest for the future. Principle number five was that treasure in heaven is better than treasures on earth. You can't take it with you, so you should invest it in kingdom initiatives and endeavors. Principle number six was to look to God, not money, as your primary source of security and significance. People who think that money buys happiness are spenders, and those who think money buys safety and security are savers. God wants you to find your happiness and security in Him. And finally, principle number seven was to follow the Holy Spirit. As Larry Osborne says, not everything that comes from heaven has your name on it. We need to trust the guidance of the Holy Spirit to teach us what is ours to do and what is not ours to do. Remember, God is looking for progress over perfection. May you be blessed in your discussion this week.